The human papillomavirus is common, with about 14 million people becoming infected with a sexually transmitted virus every year. Cervical cancer is the most common HPV-related cancer in women, but HPV can cause numerous kinds of cancers, yet many people don't even realize that. That's why Bridget is standing by now to ask a doctor. Infections can lead to cancers later in life in both men and women, but there's also a rise in head and neck cancers in much younger people. Here now to talk about HPV prevention is Dr. Raj Rajpara, radiation oncologist with UCF Lake Nona Hospital. Thank you for coming in today. Of course, thank you for having me. I know you're really busy, but we <laughs> want to talk about HPV and some of the risks associated with this type of uh, infection because we, at first, you know, when we first created a more awareness around this, it was associated with uh, the risk for cervical cancer, sure. but that has since expanded over the years. Correct, correct. So HPV is short for human papillomavirus. It's a, a very common virus. It causes a wide variety of, of issues, benign warts, but what we really worry about is cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so the cancers that are, it is associated with is cervical cancer, but also other cancers like vulvar cancer, vaginal cancers, anal cancers, and what we're actually seeing now is a rise in head and neck cancers. Yes, and it also affects, uh, it can be penile cancer as well. Correct, correct. But uh, like you said, a lot of people may not know that they've been exposed. Sure, so by the time somebody's reached the age of 20 to 30, most people have already been exposed to it. The good news is nine out of 10 people have already cleared it out of their system and it doesn't affect them later in life. Is that one out of 10 person that doesn't clear it that it can lead to a cancer, mm -hmm. especially if you've contracted the, one of the bad strains of HPV. So when you say head and neck cancer, where would that be? Uh, how, how would that come about? Because it's associated with oral sex, right? Correct, correct. So head and neck cancer is a broad, broad term of any cancer involving the head and neck. The cancers that are associated with HPV are really the oropharyngeal cancers, which are the cancers involving the back of the throat, um, like the tonsil or the back of the tongue. Okay, and so what would you look for in terms of, you know, there, there might be a problem? Sure, so most people that present with uh, oropharyngeal cancer, you can present with a sore throat, some trou trouble swallowing, maybe a change in your voice, uh, throat pain that doesn't go away, um, potentially even a, a lump in the neck that you feel. Okay, and when it comes to prevention, you know, we talk about abstinence, of course, with young sure. people, uh, vac vaccination. Talk to us about um, how that works, because many times it's the parents sort of making the decision with a child about vaccinating for them. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, um, it is a STI, so, but it is very prevalent. So, as I mentioned, most people have already been exposed to it by the time they reach 20 to 30. So, right now, there's a huge uh, resource with vaccination. Uh, it is recommended for all children to undergo the vaccine before they turn into their teenage years, ages 11 and 12. It's usually a two-shot series that you can get at your pediatrician's office, and it is recommended by the CDC to obtain that. So why is that? Are you trying to vaccinate before they become sexually active? Correct. Because you can still get this vaccine even if you are over that age limit, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. So the, the point of vaccinating children is absolutely before they reach into that age where they are sexually active to prevent it from actually... Um, them getting the virus, which it does a great job about. I think it reduces the chance of receiving it by 90%. Mm -hmm. uh, for ages between 11 to 26, um, the recommendation is still there because if you are not in a monog monogamous relationship, there is a potential that you could get the worser strains of HPV. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that risk goes up the more partners you have, right? Oh, so explain exactly. how that works. Exactly. So the more sexual partners you have, the more likely you are to be exposed to different strains of HPV. There's different strains that are more related to cancer. So if you're in a monogamous, monogamous, monogamous relationship, uh, married, um, it's unlikely that you're going to be exposed to a bad strain. But if you have multiple sex partners, absolutely, you could be exposed. Or to if one of your partners has multiple correct, partners. Correct, correct, exactly. So what do you do? Uh, is there a way to know if you've been exposed or that if it cleared but you were exposed, is, is, there, is the testing advanced enough to see like what kind of strain maybe there, you've there, been exposed to? Yeah, there really isn't a test for HPV, but there are ways to screen for it. So going to your primary care physician for regular checkups, going to your gynecologist for pap smears. During a pap smear, they can test for HPV there if you have the high risk subtypes. And what's the prognosis, you know, if you do uh, go through this, you know, if you go through, you know, having uh, some cells that come back on a test that are saying it's, it's could be cancer. Yeah, so the good news is most HPV-related cancers are curable. 
it all depends on what stage um, the, the patient presents. So earlier stage cancers, like cervical cancers, head and neck cancers with HPV related are highly curable. Okay. Uh, treatment options could be surgery, chemotherapy or radiation or all of the above and usually you see good outcomes. All right, of course, the best method, prevention. Exactly. <laughs> and we appreciate you coming in to help build awareness because the awareness is what's dwindling some right now, right? Absolutely, prevention and early detection are key. All right, thank you, Dr. Rajpara. Right. Thank you so much.